Hi and welcome to this Studio One video. I'm Lucas, composer and Studio One specialist. For those of us who work with external MIDI devices, it can be a little confusing how to set up these devices correctly in Studio One's external devices, depending on if it's a keyboard or an instrument or if it's both an input device as well as an instrument. So let's look into that and see how that works. If you connect a new MIDI device, and this is typically done via USB nowadays, then the first thing you might want to do is to go into the external devices window. You'll find that if you go into the Studio One menu and then choose options. And here you finally click external devices. So this list shows you all external devices you have already set up. These can be input or output devices. If you haven't added any device yet, this list will probably be shorter than mine. Let's click the Add button. Now the first thing we need to select is which type of MIDI device we want to add. In Studio One there are basically three types of external devices and these are exactly these three items you see here at the top of our list. Keyboard, instrument and control surface. A keyboard is usually a MIDI master keyboard. That is something we use as an input device to record MIDI notes into our song. It could also be something like a MIDI guitar or a wind controller, but it's always something you use to input MIDI notes or pitch bend modulation and so on. A control surface is a controller. It's an input device as well, but not a keyboard, but something that has knobs or faders or buttons. For example, a Presonus fader port or a Behringer BCF2000. That's a control surface. And the third type is an instrument. An instrument is something that receives MIDI notes from your computer and plays them back with its internal sounds. So an instrument basically makes sound, a keyboard does not. A keyboard only sends notes as MIDI data to Studio One. An instrument receives notes from Studio One and plays them that's the important difference you need to be aware of when you're adding a new device here. Now, of course, there are devices that are both. For example, an e-piano or a workstation or a synthesizer that has also a keyboard. And in this case, if you want to use your synthesizer both as a MIDI master keyboard as well as an instrument, then you need to add this device twice, both as a keyboard and as an instrument. That's something a lot of users run into because they only use one of these both profiles and then are confused why it does not play back the notes or why it does not send any notes to Studio One. That might be a bit confusing at first, but once you know keyboard sends MIDI to the computer and instrument receives notes from the computer, then it's pretty logical. And you see that these different types have their own icons so if you have your list of existing devices, you can look at the icon and see this is a keyboard, this here is an instrument, and this one right here is a control surface. So just for the sake of demonstration, let's add my Nord Stage 3 Stage Piano as a MIDI keyboard so that I can use it to play my virtual instruments. Before you add a new device, you should always look into the presets because some devices are predefined in this list. For example, some keyboards from Arkai or the CME X key, which is pretty common, or the Presonus controllers, of course. And by the way, you might notice that the Presonus Atom, which is a pad controller, is still added as a keyboard. That's because the Atom also sends notes, just like a MIDI keyboard. But back to my note stage. We don't have a preset for this one, so we're gonna use the generic keyboard setting. And here let's add some of the details, the name of the keyboard. Here we can select which MIDI channels should be received from the keyboard. I want to receive all MIDI channels that the keyboard sends, but you can of course remove some of them or press the All button to set or unset them all, or for example, only check MIDI channel one. Now we need to select a MIDI input, that's the actual MIDI driver of the device. In my case, it's the Nord Stage 3 USB driver. Maybe your MIDI keyboard is not connected via USB, but via MIDI DIN input on your MIDI interface. 
In this case, you need to select the MIDI driver of the audio interface here. Now you can choose if there are some MIDI messages that you don't want to be received. For example, some people don't use the aftertouch of their keyboard. I normally don't use it, so I don't want to see all the aftertouch automation in my recorded MIDI. So I can just filter it and Studio One will just ignore these messages. Or maybe you have a synthesizer and the synthesizer sends program change events every time you switch the preset and your virtual instruments respond to it and change their sounds. So if you don't want that to happen, just filter out program changes. And controllers are any other MIDI CC events such as expression, modulation, pref controller and so forth. Next is Send2 and we leave that out since it's just an input device. You can't use this field to make it an instrument, that won't work. You can use it in certain cases when you want to send automation data back to the keyboard. For example, if the keyboard has endless knobs with LED strips and you want them to reflect the changes you have recorded in Studio One. But that's a rather advanced scenario, so if you're not sure, definitely leave this field empty. The split channels option is needed if you would like to create a separate instrument track input for each MIDI channel. In this case, I want to use only one MIDI channel anyway, so I don't need it for now. If you want this device to be your default keyboard, you can enable this checkbox, so if you add a new instrument track, Studio One will automatically select this one as the MIDI input. If you don't have any keyboard set as your default, Studio One will select all inputs, so if you have several different MIDI keyboards, Studio One will record incoming notes from all of them. And last but not least, if your keyboard is an MPE device, you should select MPE and set the pitch range of your instrument. And now I'm gonna press OK to finally add this to my list of external devices. And as you can see, it appears here in the list. And now let's test it. Let's select one of our tracks. In the track controls, if you zoom out a bit, you can see that all inputs is set as my instrument input, so it will record all MIDI input devices that I have added to my list. And now let's hit record and play some notes. And it works just as I expect, and here are our recorded notes. But now my Not Stage 3 is not only a keyboard, but also an instrument. So maybe you like to record some MIDI parts with your stage piano or synthesizer. But then you don't want to play them with a virtual instrument like Mai Tai or Contact, but you rather want to send them back to the stage piano or synthesizer so that it will play it with the same sound that you use to record these parts. In this case, as I explained before, you need to add it as an instrument as well. So let's again go into the external instruments, then add a new device, and now we're gonna select new instrument. And again, Clavia and Nord Stage 3. And now we use the Send To option, and here I select the Nord Stage MIDI output. And we also have the MIDI channel setting, I'm gonna select all MIDI channels here. So this makes sure that all notes on all MIDI channels are sent to the instrument. And I don't need any of the MIDI clock or MIDI timecode options. But you might want to use them if you want to synchronize your device to the playback in Studio One. And you can also select in which interval you want CC automation to be sent. For example, if you draw in a pitch bend or expression automation curve, then this decides in which intervals Studio One will send these values to the device. 10 milliseconds is fine for me, and my Nord Stage is not an MPE device, so I keep this setting off. Okay, so let's close this dialog by clicking OK. And now you can see that the Nord Stage shows up twice in the list, as a keyboard with the keyboard icon and as an instrument. Now what I need to do to send my recorded MIDI notes back to the Nord Stage is to just select the Nord Stage as the instrument output of my instrument track. That's important because Studio One needs to know where to send the notes on this track. And now let's try it out and loop our notes so that we can test it. Mm -hmm. 
And as you can see, or as you can hear, the Nord Stage plays these notes with its internal piano sound. And if you want, you can switch the sound, for example, to any piano. So it works exactly as we want. I hope I could give you a good overview of how to add external devices to Studio One. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do another video on adding your MIDI controllers as control surfaces. And of course, if you found that video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you want to support me, please subscribe to my channel. This really helps me to make more high quality Studio One videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.